Okay, um, so I wanted to kind of just slow down and kind of talk about the thumbnails. I talked to my client and we both agreed on either three or seven because they were just the most dynamic. And in the end, he said it was up to me. So I actually chose three, even though it might not be as dynamic as seven. I just, I don't know, it felt less generic and it kind of was showing off more of her body. So I thought like, since she's going to be like an albino Viking, and kind of have like a cool costume. I feel like this one would probably show off that the best. And also it would show off that perspective because I was thinking of like having rocks poke out from this like fog. Also the valve at the top here doesn't take up as much screen as this one. So I kind of feel like, yeah, I feel like this one is a good one to go with as well. And I also kind of like the knife in the mouth as well. I just, <laughs> I think it looks very badass. So yeah. So I am choosing this one and in Blender I have deleted everything else so now I just have the placeholder assets, I have everything kind of sorted because I like being organized, I like kind of having my cameras and lights and then my char uh, character with their costume or props and here I'll be adding the new assets. So. What I'll be doing is I'll be using Quixel Bridge and if you haven't watched our side quest videos, the first one talks about how to kind of use Quixel Mega Scans to kind of create an environment. We also did that for the Nürnberg project. Um, basically you get a set amount of points per month and then you kind of purchase them. So you get 90 points. So yeah, here you have a lot of 3D assets. You can see each uh, asset is four points each. And the decals are, let's choose, yeah, there we go, one point each. And the surfaces, as in shaders or textures, they are two points each. So you kind of basically just purchase whatever you need for a project. And the beautiful thing with this is uh, if I go to purchased and what I actually purchased for this project was these, let me get there. Yeah, there we go. These rocks, because I thought these were perfect to kind of poke out of the fog at the bottom. So what you do basically is you just choose an asset, you can choose export settings, and you can choose either 2K, 4K, 8K. Usually I go for 2K because I tend to use a lot of models in my scene and if you have too many 8K or 4K like assets in your scene, like it tends to get very slow and very bogged down. So I usually go for 2K, but if I have like here, something that is quite close to the camera and you're gonna see like close up but normally i go for a 2k if that makes sense so you just choose your resolution and hit export and then you're gonna see this happen export successfully and now if you jump into blender mm, isn't this cool um, so yeah it's very easy kind of like importing models and scans and textures this way basically with textures if i go here Let's say I wanted this one, I export that. And then if I create an asset, let's say I create a plane, make that bigger. And then here you'll see that it shows up as construction plaster. So it's the same with decals as well, basically. So, so yeah, let's delete this. And if we now go into the shader rendered mode, you can see it glitching out a lot and I don't know if this is like a bug or something they're working on in Blender but from 2.9 I've noticed this happen with a lot of the imported models from Sketchfab and from Quixel Bridge so the way you kind of resolve that is the thing is like it's been mixing up like the nodes so instead of going to normal which it usually does automatically it somehow goes to alpha i don't know why so you just need to move that to normal and then everything's normal get it <laughs> um okay so yeah this is how i usually start with projects when i have the main subject in the view I kind of start importing models and I just kind of move them around and I try to kind of find something compositionally pleasing. So since uh, she's going to be gripping here, I would probably, well, 
to be honest, this isn't the 8K version, so I'm just gonna put this in the background, but yeah, let's... Because I do want to have like a good sense of scale. So I want it to look like she's really, really high up and especially with the fog and everything. And since the fog is basically going to be covering this bottom portion, we're just going to be seeing the top portion uh, of these rocks pop up, which is exactly what I want. So let's go. Oh yeah, you can't even see it in the view. Okay, there we go. Uh -huh maybe something like this the thing is like you don't have to settle on one thing like you can just import all of them actually let's do that so let's go to 3d assets da, 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 da. scroll down it's probably a better way of like honestly sorting through this but i, I can't be bothered so yeah let's export this and this is the one we exported before, so let's export this one as well. Just make sure it's 2k here. Um, mm -hmm. And it's gonna bug out and oh my god, my eyes. Let's drag this up. Choose the asset, normal. Choose the other asset, normal. And there we go. And you don't even have to be in rendered view. Um, I just prefer that when I'm kind of placing things, but sometimes it's easier to see when you have just a uh, clay shader mode on let's see let's start placing because then you're just kind of thinking about shapes you're not really seeing the texture so you're kind of less distracted by that let's actually get it to the same size and move it down here size that one up move it down here Mm -hmm. Let's try to move this further out. So yeah. So I just want to make sure that um, we're going to have a lot of this covered in fog anyway, but I want to make sure that my main shapes, which is the character and the rope and the hook here, like they don't get there aren't any tangents, so if I were to kind of place it like so, that would kind of create the tangent, and usually that isn't very good for 2D illustrations, because for some people, especially I know Omar John, like it just tends to bug the heck out of him whenever I accidentally do something in my painting that creates a tangent, and he's just like, fix it, fix it. Um, and it's good having like overlapping shapes as well because that really pushes the sense of depth in the scene. Um, let's actually get rid of these guidelines because it's very annoying. Um, yeah, let's continue. I know this isn't like the most exciting thing to really watch. Um, and that's usually why I tend to kind of really speed things up and kind of cut these parts out from tutorials because it's just, it is literally importing assets and just moving things around until they look good. And sometimes you nail that right away and sometimes it just takes forever. So <laughs> it really depends on the project and um, what you're trying to go for. Okay, so I think before I go any further, I want to kind of change the shader of these because originally, if I bring up the reference, here I'm using PureRef, by the way. It's a great reference tool, honestly. If you haven't tried it, use it. You just kind of plop in some pictures and then you can just move them around. You can move the window around. It's, it's awesome. Um, but yeah, so the look and mood I'm going for is these red rocks with snow on. And obviously we don't have snow on our models just yet, but I will be following a tutorial. I will be creating a file where I take one of these rocks and then I kind of procedurally add snow to them. And then all I have to do is just append that file into this scene and then just kind of add that shader onto every rock here and everything will automatically have snow on it. So if that confuses you, don't worry. Like I'm, I'm going to get to it eventually, but for now, Let's kind of focus on the color. So value wise, these are way too bright. So what I have to do first is I kind of have to bring down the value. So let's use an RGB curves and let's add that in. 
And then here you can kind of adjust the value. So let's kind of make it a bit darker like that. Yeah. Maybe a bit more. There we go. And then just like in Photoshop, if you're familiar with that, you can add in a color ramp. When you add that in, you can basically choose the value. So like this will be the darkest part and this will be the brightest part. So let's go for a dark kind of burnt red. And then for this part, let's go for just straight red. And it's going to look really weird. Um, that's because of the specular. So if you turn down the specular, it won't be affected by the HDRI scene as much. So... Um, we can also like compress these values. So if you want more of like a burnt look or a stronger kind of contrasty look, you can like really push these together. Here, that isn't happening as much. So I'm not going to go fully for that, but maybe like this and then tweak maybe a bit more toward orange. So it looks a bit more natural because when we put in kind of this bluish whitish fog, it's automatically going to look a bit more red, so we don't have to go like full on stylized red. Um, but yeah, the beautiful thing with this is once you have the setup, you can just drag over them, control C, copy them, control V, and then if I just do this and do this, you can see it happening. But again, like I need to turn on the specular. And that's so much better. And you can also like individually tweak these models to say that this model was a bit different. So maybe I want to bring the redness a bit more like that and the blackness down a bit. Um, but yeah, let's do it for this one as well. Let's move that out of the way. Move this here, move that there. And turn down the specular and yeah, sort of getting there, yeah. <laughs> um, so as for these foreground elements, like I'm not going to care too much about the placement of everything right now. I just kind of want to put everything into the scene and then I can kind of start moving things around. So since these rocks are going to be in the foreground, I want to kind of re-import these, but with the 8K textures instead. So let's choose this, 8K, um, export. And what I think it usually does, it kind of, yeah, it kind of brings it in, but what it does is it also replaces the original texture. Um, let's see, let's undo until it's, uh, yeah, there we go. So for this one, since this is the one I'm trying to import, let's actually make that its own like texture. So let's name this maybe like 2K. And then I wonder if we re-import it now, will it come in as its own thing? Yes, it will. Okay, great. So we just have to press that one, cut off the alpha here. I know it is duplicating. That is so weird. Oh well. And then just plug this in there and this in here. And all we need to do is just kind of delete the 2K ones because it's kind of overlapping them. I don't know, it's such a weird thing. There we go. And yeah, that should be it. So if we now zoom in, this should be much higher resolution than the 2K ones. So we can actually just rename this 4K. So we kind of know the difference. Obviously we need to size this up and we'll be painting over a lot of these assets anyway. So it doesn't matter like if the texture isn't quite there, um, we'll just paint over it. Sometimes when you get too much like detail with 3D assets, like it can become a bit too stale. And I kind of like having just implied texture, like implied detail, but not it all being there because you can become very lazy and just kind of rely on that and just think like, oh, all of the texture is there. Like that's less work for me to do, but sometimes that looks a bit stiff. So I, I do recommend like painting over 
um, the 3D textures so they look a bit better. This just so they look a bit more interesting because if you have your character that looks very like 2D hand painted and then you have this rock next to her that looks super 3D like that's just gonna <laughs> look weird so okay now that we've added all our kind of placeholder assets into the scene like I'll be moving everything around later on but now I just kind of want to focus more on the character um, as you can see she's now changed color <laughs> that's because my original idea was to kind of have her as this like albino viking if I just bring up my reference here there we go so yeah here we go so I kind of wanted her to have this like white paint on her and I kind of wanted her to have like red accents so kind of red paint on top of the white paint and this white paint is kind of protecting her against the cold. So this image color wise is going to be very neutral. Uh, it's mostly going to be this kind of color palette where we have mostly everything in white and kind of like very desaturated blue and then you have these pops of like red and brown and orange which I think would be really interesting. So the way you do that, obviously when you import your DAS model, if we just repeat that step because I have a video out as I mentioned earlier. Um, so let me see this one. And when we import her, yeah, she's gonna have a different color. So if I hide this, there we go. So um, what I do to change the color of the model is to head into the textures here. And for each individual body part, so torso, face, ears, legs, arms, and so on, I'm going to turn down the subsurface. And I'm also going to change the color to more bluish hue. So uh, yeah, about here. What I can actually do is control C, copy this color, and then just turn down the subsurface of the face, copy the color, and just repeat this process for basically the ears, legs, and the arms. There we go. And as you can see, her lips are still very pink and very red, which looks a bit weird. So let's turn on the subsurface here and maybe make her lips just like a darker color, maybe a bit bluish. Yeah, there we go. So that's pretty much it, honestly. Um, you can obviously like tweak these colors more later on. So maybe when we add in some sunlight, it's going to look a bit odd. So we'll leave that for now and move on to creating some fog in the scene. So I actually released a video kind of talking about how to add in special effects and volumetrics in Blender. So if you haven't seen that, I would recommend seeing Quick Tips episode 12 for that. Um, it kind of goes just more in depth of like how I use special effects in my illustration work. So if you haven't seen that, definitely check it out. Um, but I will kind of roughly go over how to make fog here. The way you do that is you press Shift A and you're gonna add an empty through the volume tab. And the cool thing about volumetrics in Blender 2.92, because they just added this feature, is that they've actually added the function to have some fog kind of conform to a shape, which I think is really cool. So you can actually make wave shapes and kind of turn that into a volumetric shape, which actually wasn't possible before. If you tried making more complex shapes, it just wouldn't kind of conform to that shape. So I think that's a really cool thing they've added. But for now, like for this example, I'm just going to be using cubes. Like I'm just going to keep it simple. So let's add in a cube as well and let's size that up. So I want the volumetrics to kind of be covering this area. So if I size it up, it's going to be pretty big. I want the fog to be pretty thick because I wanted to cover the, the bottom of these rocks. So let's size that up. And let's head into camera view. Yeah, there we go. Like you see, some of it isn't reaching that far. So let's just move it slightly that way. There we go. Um, should we have it further down? Mm, yeah, of course, because we want some of these other rocks to kind of be peaking up. So we don't want it to be too high up. So let's say about there and 
let's expand this way to cover this area and what you do now is basically you press into volume and you go to the modifiers and you add the mesh to volume modifier and you basically just pick whatever reference object you want so for us it's going to be the cube so when i do that you can see some volume stuff happening um if i just hide the cube for a bit yeah it's going to be very dark oh by the way you have to hide the cube because it's going to be visible so if you hide the cube this is going to be our volume object so if we go to shaders add in a new shader here we get the option to kind of choose the density so let's up the density a bit to kind of cover those as you can see like you can almost see the bottom there so let's cover it up a bit more and let's actually tweak the color so let's make it brighter um right now it's going to look a bit odd because we don't have any lights in the scene kind of interacting so it is going to look a bit off um but that's okay well we'll deal with that later on <laughs> Um, so yeah, okay, this looks decent for now. Obviously, we want to also create a plane. Um, obviously, you can't see me right now. I'm like pointing at the screen. But we want a plane kind of facing us as well and not just like horizontal, but more vertical because we want some separation between the foreground elements here, the, the model obviously, and the background. So what we can actually do is we can duplicate these so shift d duplicate oh yeah in order to kind of flip the volume we also need to flip the original object so that will be this one so if we just choose both of them and go to the side view here and just do this um and then hide the cube again we're not going to be able to see anything <laughs> god that is one thick cloud it's actually try to let's actually try to reduce the density of that but the problem now is if i try to kind of change the density it changes the density of both of them and that's not what we want so what we have to do is go here and we need to make the volume its own object and not a copy and then we also need to make the texture its own data so press that and now if we adjust it yeah there we go so let's bring that way down and actually let's try to move it a bit closer so choose that and maybe about here let's see if we head into camera mode does this look better yeah here we go so you can definitely see the difference now in the separation you have the foreground elements here um and if we were to kind of look at this from like a grayscale perspective, like we really want things that are closer to us to be more high contrast and have darker tones and brighter tones, whereas everything in the background kind of gets compressed value wise because of the atmosphere. All right, now that we've added in all the rocks, the fog, we've changed the skin color. Um, the only thing remaining is really lighting and kind of adding in the snow and then obviously moving everything around. Most of the time I use an add-on called Physical Atmosphere and Starlight, which I will add a link to in the folder that comes with this tutorial pack. This add-on is absolutely amazing. It kind of simulates sunlight, so you can kind of choose how high on the horizon it is, like where it is. You can choose like how dense the atmosphere is and you can also change all of the colors so like how much like the color that gets scattered uh, which color gets absorbed the intensity you can even add stars it just adds so much flexibility that just adding you know a uh, typical sunlight just doesn't really offer that much if you go here like this is basically all that you kind of get to play with but with the physical starlight and atmosphere, it kind of simulates all of that for you. Yeah, obviously I have it turned on, but you can't really see much because I have... Yeah, there we go. I actually added in some fog before, uh, just kind of test things around. So let's actually keep that. I think I brightened up the fog as well. 
Um, there we go. So it's pretty much the same thing. It's just a bit brightened now that we've added in this starlight. So you can kind of see the difference here. And just pay attention to like how the shadows and kind of light interacts with this like fog element, which I think is so cool. And that's why I kind of prefer using volumetrics in scenes like this, because painting this kind of stuff in is a pain in the ass. And I don't know, like you don't always know like how the light is going to interact. Like obviously you see a lot of like shadows being cast and this is like very valuable information. So this is kind of the benefits of like doing things in 3D, obviously. But yeah, so here with the starlight sun, you can see I've kind of directed it in a way that I wanted to kind of create interesting shapes on her. So I want her to kind of mostly be in light, whereas everything else is kind of in shadows. And I also want this part to kind of be hit by light because I want a lot of the focal point to kind of be drawn here. Obviously it doesn't make sense right now because it looks like a very modern hatch, but um, I'm gonna make more of an ancient hatch eventually. I'm gonna sculpt that in Blender and then take that into 3D coat. But for now it kind of works like these are the things I tried to figure out very early with my illustrations. I just tried to block out the lighting, get everything like in frame so I can kind of see how the silhouettes of everything kind of works together. And I can obviously kind of adjust the... Uh, yeah, here we go. As you can see, when I adjust the elevation, you can see it gets a lot darker and cooler. And that's the cool thing with physical atmosphere and starlight is that it kind of calculates all of that for you. So you can kind of simulate like a sun setting, a sun rising, you can simulate night. It's just so cool. Like I mentioned, I want more of like an overcast situation because I kind of want to simulate what's going on here. So you have more softer shadows and overcast basically makes a lot of the colors kind of pop more. So I thought that would be a good solution for this illustration in particular. So yeah, that's pretty much the sunlight covered. Obviously I'm not gonna go into too much detail here um, because I have this add-on, but if you did not have the add-on, because I know it is a bit expensive, you can just shift A, just add in a sun, and then you can either double R, like kind of rotate it freely around or just press R once and just move your mouse and it's just gonna very roughly kind of simulate sunlight. And then obviously here you can kind of change a lot of the things. And if you want any more lighting, you can obviously add that around. I think I'm just gonna leave it for the sun right now, but if I find things to be either too dark or too bright, I might add in some like secondary light sources. But yeah, let's move on to adding snow to these rocks. All right, time to add some snow to our assets. So this is actually the same assets as one of the rocks that I had in the scene. Um, but basically I followed this tutorial on YouTube, which kind of taught me how to kind of set up a shader that allows you to kind of tweak um, how much snow you want on it. So it's actually very clever. What it does, it kind of creates a gradient. So everything that's kind of facing upwards is kind of receiving snow and the snow is actually a displacement. And as you can see, you get a lot of options. You get snow direction and you get the texture uh, itself. So you can kind of tweak the texture and you can also choose how much displacement. Um, but basically with the snow direction, you can kind of choose how intense you want the snow so if you want it like covering a lot of surfaces or maybe you want it like an inverted kind of way where almost everything is covered except for the top and basically with the gamma you can kind of choose how hard and soft the edges are um, and here this is basically emulating the sparkles that you see in the snow so you can kind of make that a lot more contrastful like that uh, it looks a bit unnatural so just be careful with that um, you can also like uh, make it more rough, you can make it more shiny, and so on. The way I'm actually going to do this is I am going to control C, copy this, and I am going to head into our scene. There we go. And if I control V, paste it now, like this. And if I just kind of move it out of the way, what we do now basically is go to the shader setup. So just press this and we're going to copy everything except for this, which is the rock texture. So what we're basically going to do is just kind of copy everything here and the mix shader. So control C, 
and head into here, control V, paste that, and let's just move that out of the way with G. And what we can actually do is, since this is the rock texture, we can just kind of select everything and press control G, which is going to create a group. So uh, if I head out, we can call this group rock one. And if I move this here, or let's actually move all of this up there. And if we now feed this into here and feed the shader into surface, isn't that cool? <laughs> and it looks so cool with the red as well. Like it's just, ah, oh, it looks brilliant. And we can obviously manually adjust like how strong you want it. So let's say we want more of a softer transition. Yeah, that looks kind of nice, isn't it? Um, so basically, I'm just going to copy this shader around to like all of the assets. So go, ooh, where are you? There you are. Control G, head out. Let's call this rock two. Move this closer. Control V. E this into shader. And then let's move this there Ooh. and since a lot of these are basically copies of one another um it kind of applies it to all of them which is very cool so that kind of like halves half of the work at least so control g let's make another group after this call this rock three and just repeat the same process control v mm -hmm. move that into shader and move the shader into surface and I think that's it yeah there we go so we now head into the view ah doesn't that look very cool obviously you can see a lot of the edges now so we would kind of have to adjust the atmosphere so if I go to the volume let's actually change the texture oh I have another added a texture let's do that okay so da 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 should we have it a bit brighter? Should we? Hmm. Actually a bit darker because with our reference image, it was a bit darker. So actually let's do that. Let's darken it a bit and make it a bit more blue, like darkish blue. Yeah. Ooh, that looks moody. Okay. Let's actually increase the density. Hmm. That's too dark. Actually, let's increase the density and then brighten it up a bit. Let's make it a bit more purple actually. Yeah, that's pretty similar, isn't it? So I think I like I'm gonna adjust the rocks a bit to kind of make them a bit more orange because I really like some of the kind of orange tint that's happening here. So let's actually do that. If you, by the way, if you ever get lost and you're like, ah, where's my shader? You can actually just press A and numpad comma and it will bring up everything. So um, also like if you get lost in your scene and you kind of don't know where things are, like if you choose your character here, for example, and you're way over here, if you press numpad comma, it will bring you to that character. So that's just very handy. Good to know, you know. So... For this texture, in order to kind of edit that group, you just open it and here you go. So let's make this a bit more orange. Oh, that's a bit too much, maybe. Let's actually copy this and kind of move it around. So let's choose this one and control V, paste it in here. And where else? Did we edit this one? Yes. How about this one? Rock 2. Choose that. Control V. I think that was all of them. So yeah, it's actually really coming together, isn't it? Like obviously you see down here, there's a lot of darkness. Like sometimes we want that, sometimes we won't. So we might have to add in some secondary light sources to kind of light things up. Um, because when you squint, Things are kind of blending together but I think once we actually add more clothing to her and add her hair and the red paint and everything like she is gonna stand out against the background 
But basically what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to kind of start moving things around so that they look nice because basically we have all of our most important things in the scene now. So I just kind of want to move everything around and just try to find a good composition. But I am going to save that for the next videos because we're going to be going into a lot of adjustments, moving things around, adding more lighting, adjusting the atmosphere and so on. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. The next one will be out very soon. See you then. Bye.